Hi, welcome back. Today, I would like to do a video regarding processing Fujifilm RAW files in open source software. Here, I've selected four files from my Fujifilm X-T3, and I have these files here loaded in Darktable, current version, and I have the same images here in raw therapy. What I want to do though, I did process one of the files initially in Darktable. This is the image that I came to. I'm actually going to, so I can get it a little bit bigger. I do prefer how Darktable looks on the image, but when you zoom in, you know, it looks good. You don't get that worming effect that you do get in Lightroom under Windows. Now, we do know that Capture One Pro, at least in the commercial software world, is kind of the de facto raw editor for raw therapy images. However, the open source software handles it totally fine. Um, this is in raw therapy, of course. As you can see, it is a little slower to load. However, the processing looks good. You know, the detail is there. I do feel the details a little bit better on Darktable, but I believe that's just the sharpening it's doing. However, let's go here. I would like to process probably this file in raw therapy. I'm going to zoom out. Um, I do in here, I have the sensor with X-Trans. You know, you got demosaicing. I have it just on this default three pass. That's what it defaults to. You can uh, experiment with that if you would like. I just leave it on that one because it seems to produce the best results for me. But it's also more processor intensive. Um, I do utilize this tool here on the left to get my skin tones properly. Now you can use two different versions here. You know, you just focus on these dash lines here. This image here, I am going to actually initially go here. Always like to add color propagation for that, but I am going to do a color picker for white balance here. I'm going to set that, and then I'm actually going to cool it some here just to get the look that I like. Now... For most of my photo work that I do, just adding a little bit of contrast here and there is really all I really do. I do like my images to be brightened up a little bit. If the image is overexposing just a tad, I'll bring highlights down a little bit, but this image really doesn't need it. The only other thing I really would do to this image, there are multiple other ways you can add contrast and uh, vibrance to an image. I tend to just use this vibrance tool here and I'll just bring it up maybe to 10. You can try to protect the skin tones there. Other than that, I have no demosaicing, no sharpening applied to this image. I'm going to zoom into this image here. It looks good. I mean, you can see here, you know, the color noise if I zoom in more. So I'd usually, for any digital images, even if I shoot at the base a ISO, I turn on demosaicing or noise reduction in raw therapy. It doesn't remove the noise completely. It just removes the color noise. And then I just pop on sharpening some. So this image here looks like that inside of raw therapy. I'm going to go into dark table. I'm going to hit L. Now I do know a lot of people 
avoid dark table because you know it looks like you need a dang master's degree to even use it before i process this file however i want to go into my settings here because under processing i do have it set to scene referred sigmoid i've honestly quit using filmic i have some multiple reasons and you know one reason is just more tied to the developer of that if you were subscribed to my old youtube channel you probably would know about that situation but here i am gonna actually go here to reconstruct under highlight but i do like to go to the sigmoid module and set it to aces with me doing a lot of video work that is something i do like that that does support and the difference between filmic and uh, sigmoid sigmoid just is a it, i think it's just taking less steps and is not as accurate i will now scroll up here bring the exposure up some i do have other modules enabled that are not <laughs> the the normal scene referred i have it set to modules all because i do use depreciated modules all the time uh for like this i would actually set maybe a medium maybe a high gamma on there let's see maybe bring down my exposure just a little bit there I'm going to hit O, check the exposure. Okay, nothing clipping on the person, just shadows. You can use the tone equalizer. I, if I use it, I usually go into this, into the masking. I'll bring this over to where it's somewhat in the center. And then expand it. And then just get that line in the center, but to where it's not really clipping, just as best as I can. I like to have this so I can see where I'm actually selecting. And I honestly just want to bring up some detail in my shadow areas. Not a huge amount, but just a little bit there. That looks good to me. Now, normally I do apply the Hald Sealuts that you can get off of uh, the Rawpedia website. I'm not going to do that here uh, just to show how the image is doing. Um, as far as anything else I would do in here, I usually will go to this color tab here and go to color balance RGB. I just leave this stuff alone for now. What I do is I set basic colorfulness, natural skin. It will bump the saturation a little too much for my liking. So I'll go here to global vibrance. You can scroll with the mouse pointer in that area. You can also click and hold to move this stuff. Double click to reset. You can right click and you can bring up this menu. To just slide your mouse around here and really fine tune it you know and that's very little adjustment i'm going to bring it down just a bit more you know there's that for that image um however i will be that's the sharpening i do go into denoise profiled so just like in raw therapy zoom in you see the color noise there now I'm zoomed in 200%. So I will go to this denoise profiled. I click the hamburger menu and I do chroma only. So the noise itself is still there. Just the color noise is gone. And as you can see, this denoising is doing a little bit better of a job. Um, beyond that, I will just go in and turn on the sharpening you can set it to whatever you like you know depending on the image that you're working with just really depends on your taste this is one of the images though this was shot with my 23 millimeter f1.4 
so equivalent of a 35 millimeter and it's the old 2314 it is not the new linear motor weather resistant one it is not that but what i'll do is i'm going to hit tab on this image here to get rid of all the extra menus <laughs> I'm going to do the same inside of raw therapy. Just get them together here. You can see my Boulder's Gate 3 wallpaper there in the background. But here's the images. They're fairly close. Like in Darktable, I did lower the vibrance. In raw therapy, I didn't. So what I can do here, go back in here. I'll go here and I'll just reset that. I did bump the vibrance some in raw therapy. So I'll just bump it at four here. And there's the two images. I do feel that I prefer the dark table image, to be all honest. I do honestly just prefer the color rendering in dark table better now. Um, I used to honestly hate dark tables color because it was just terrible in the past honestly and raw therapy at the time was substantially better the blue on the doors you can see in raw therapy it is accurate to what it was that day doing this shoot in dark table it's still close dark table is shifting it a little bit but dark table isn't saturating the image as much i would put dark tables color rendering closer to what capture one pro is actually doing out of the box dark tables color is very 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 close to capture one pro both seem to be demosaicing x trans sensors totally fine this is the x trans 3 which is in the xt3 which the images were shot with the xt4 and now the new xs20 also has this same sensor a uh, person that i follow on youtube is also a viewer this viewer of this channel uh 1000 keywords i believe is his name or 1000 words he just switched over to an xt2 my xt2 has not worked for a few years um, I need to send it in and get fixed. I just have not done that yet. The shutter mechanism in it is not working, but uh, I would love to bring that camera back into production use again. But these are just some of the images here. But what I'm gonna do now, I'm actually the, so you can just see the way the image handles portraits and human skin, color, everything. I'm actually going to, just for these images here, but I'm actually going to go into Darktable. And I'm actually going to go ahead and process these other two images really quick. Just for the remainder of the video, I'm just going to go here so you will see my process really quick. This image, however, I will be lowering the exposure because I do want to go into LUT 3D. <laughs> do have how to see LUT. I'm going to go into color, Kodak. Let's try the 400. That one I don't really like, so I'm going to scroll. I'm using the scroll wheel to select a different one. Kind of actually like that one. That is actually the Kodak 400. 4 plus plus, so that is actually the film being pushed. What I'm going to do, though, is I will be adjusting some stuff here. Probably going to have to use the tone equalizer. Uh, I guess I'll just leave that that way. Do want to go here, bring this background down a bit. See some ghosting effects on the ground. Bring that. Let's see. Let's reset to bring that over widen it some bring that over now you can filter stuff a little edge refinements can help this image is very 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 overexposed in the background however <laughs> so i mean i like that looks good i am going to be i 
you do not use this white balance module. This is misleading. <laughs> Darktable does not like it when you apply white balance twice. But one of the cool tools is you can bring this up. Where is it at? You bring up this white frame with this little light bulb here. You want to actually go over into color calibration. <laughs> and you want to utilize this for applying your white balance. Now, the whole purpose of this white border is it does help your eyes in terms of getting your white balance right. And there's that. And just for the heck of it, I'm gonna disable the white. The, okay, yeah, looks good. I do want to try Adobe RGB. Let's try Rec 2020. Nope. <laughs> 709. Set it to Adobe. Set it to Adobe. And you have these other interpolation modes, depending on what you think looks the best. I'm going to shut the light bulb off. That I really do like. Um, if I go here, take a snapshot, go back up, go here. So you get the before, the after. It does look like a very strong film was used. <laughs> but you can add film noise to the image if you would like. Now, I do want to make sure that I denoise the image first. Chroma only. Now, I'm going to just, in this field here, I'm actually going to search grain. And the cool thing about this grain is if you're a film person, like you can see this is shot. So, I know this image is at ISO 125. So, I'm actually going to... Drop this and actually just go 125 and it will apply film grain. You can lessen the strength of it. Just depends on your taste, you know, but that's something I do there. You know, that is just one of my editing processes. This image here, I would do pretty much the same stuff to it, but I don't want the video to run super long. But if you're someone shooting Fujifilm and you want to actually utilize open source software like Darktable, Raw Therapy. Um, Darktable, I do feel, does give you more fine grain uh, control over an X-Trans image. Raw Therapy is still very, very good, and you can still use these film presets that I loaded in Raw Therapy because they're from a site tied to Raw Therapy. But there is no reason, really, to be using commercial raw editors in this day and age. I do have my commercial raw editors. Um, however, <laughs> no matter what, no matter how often I boot into Windows, use that commercial software to speed through shoots and everything, um, a lot of that software I can just run through Wine or run through Windows VM inside of Linux, which is something I'm actually switching to doing because I'm honestly getting tired of dull booting. So I'd rather just move Windows into a virtual machine, do single GPU pass through. But uh, that is something I may go into detail later. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, do you think the open source software does a good job with X-Trans sensors? This is just me showing some of my experience using X-Trans sensors. Um, my Fujifilm X-T3, I do not have anymore. I do still have my X-T2, but again, it needs to be fixed. Um, I do have some of my Fujifilm lenses still, obviously, but I mainly shoot my Panasonic Lumix camera, which is currently not supportive, supported natively in open source software even though the raw file support for it has been added to libraw. It's just not on their public release of it yet, <laughs> which is one of the reasons why the Affinity Photo version 2.0 stuff can't read raw files from the new Panasonic cameras because for some reason they just refuse to work with the libraw and open source community even though their software is built on top of open source. So, but for me, 
I have honestly decided to just stick with open source software for my image editing because I honestly, I don't really do very many edits. And if I do need to do something like shoot tethered, I've already tested my camera with software like Capture One Pro in a Windows VM. I can make sure it's connected and I'm able to shoot tethered into a Windows virtual machine. But there are future videos coming on this content and content creation in general. Uh, I do shoot a lot of video more now. So there is going to be some DaVinci Resolve color grading and editing stuff coming. And mainly also because I am writing like a short film, it'll probably be like, I don't know, three minutes long, probably. That will be coming soon. Um, I'll release the short film first and then release behind the scenes and just the process of making that. But this is just me showing open source on Linux with these Fujifilm X-Trans files. Let me know what you think of the quality from Fujifilm images on here. Darktable does have film presets in one of their modules that are actually Fujifilm presets. So if you shoot Sony, Canon, Nikon, <laughs> or Panasonic, you can add like Fujifilm's uh, classic chrome that a lot of people love. You can add that film preset to non-Fujifilm cameras or add it to your Fujifilm camera in this. Um, I do feel if you're using Fuji's film presets, though, you're probably just saving out the JPEGs and keeping the raw files as more of an archival process. But if you want to see some more tutorials regarding Fujifilm on Darktable and editing process, maybe you want to see my process for doing black and white images, let me know in the comments. Like comment, subscribe, click the bell for future notifications, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.